Seems like it'll be a cold day before we get another male rapper to St. Louis. With Sexy Red holding down the torch for the city, it's only a matter of time before it starts spreading throughout the city. The women been doing their best keeping the torch rolling. From Blake Yana, Big Boss Vet, Big Step Amori Lady O, a lot more. I think it's safe to say the female rap scene in STO is in great hands. On the other hand, we've had a lot of our male artists get close with no cigar. From D Hancho, through Problems, 530 Deep, C Murder, all seeing that fair share of success, don't get me wrong, but never once have we had a mainstream star since the one we all know. Which brings us to the topic of today's video. The artist who seemingly came out of nowhere and after only about a year has solidified himself as the biggest male rapper in the city. This is none other than Mo P himself. But in order to know Mo P, you first gotta learn about J Mo. For the true fans, this is gonna be something new to you. But for the newer fans, this is a trip down memory lane. As y'all can clearly see, Mo P was a lot younger in this video. Using the dates of the release and his current age, we're assuming he's around 13 at the time. And fans could hear early on the potential we had. As the video racked up, a large amount of views for a debut. But shortly after that, there were no more Jossom JMO, leaving fans wondering why. An artist like Mo P is surprisingly open about his past in his music, as well as on his social media. It seems like the artist kept archives of all of his finest memories going up, as he was posting countless of them throughout the couple of years here. This could lead to him experiencing life simply being the reason he failed back after success from his first video. But those life experiences weren't always rainbows, guys. Coming up in St. Louis, man, you know, that's a wild city, man. <laughs> he often talks about being alone and dealing with a difficulty family life, which had him bouncing around a lot. Came up from the south side for real. But I'm really the type of I'm thinking like, I really put my mark in everywhere I go type shit, you know, fake, cause I ain't really, you know, too much stay at the crib, man. I think you walk know, here, you you walk here everywhere. So, but yeah, man. A lot of people don't realize, but it takes money to start a rap career. Unless you just get lucky from video shoot appearances, recording the song, unless you have a team or money, it's difficult to keep your career going. And y'all know it's hard to even get your mom to buy you a pair of shoes, let alone play for a music video. Now, speaking of luck, that in itself is what ended up playing a major part in how we got to know him today. So as he has passed, still have an undeniable talent that all his peers recognize, they wouldn't let him waste it. This leads us to Scully Gang, AKA the Kill Boys. When they first hit the scene, it was the perfect timing. Everything hit right when it needed to. At this time, Kia vehicles were being stolen nonstop thanks to viral videos that was giving everybody instructions on how to steal the cars. Then you had viral videos of young teens driving the cars. This trend ended up creating the term Kia Boys. Now, Jet 5 and Arbo, they didn't originally market the song as a Kia Boy anthem or anything like that. But the lyrics and the young appearance of the rappers led the video to go viral quickly after it was picked up on social media. This led them to connect the 607 Unk, which then they decided to run with that Kia Boy narrative, even though the Kia Boys is really something that's kind of started in Milwaukee. Now, I know what you're thinking. What does any of this have to do with MoP? We get in there, we get in there. Mo P and the Scully Boy members, J5, Jeff 5 Arbo are actually all related, with Fresh 314 being the father of the Scully members mentioned. J5 also already had a decent amount of buzz, which helped on the incoming situation that in the end changed Mo P's life forever. So at this time, the world doesn't even know Mo P exists or even know of a Mopi. Only thing they know 
is that was once a guy named J-Mo. And he had not yet released the song under the name OP. So a videographer we all know well by the name of Nico Nail happened to just start a new series at the time. Title dropped that The series was an insta hitman and had artists going viral simply from an acapella freestyle. Nico Nail was tapping in with all the artists across the city gaining buzz. And he ended up scheduled to lock in with the Scully Gang members for a video shoot. It's at this video shoot where Mo P and Nico Nail met for the first time. And at that video shoot is where we were introduced to Mo P for the first time. If not for this meeting, who knows what things could be today. Friends and family of Mo P believing in him so much, they asked that Nico could shoot a quick video for Mo P as well. With him having the new acapella series up and running, it was easy and simple for him to look out and knock it out for him real quick as it would only take a few minutes. What Nico heard had to have shocked his ears because it's clear from that day that he saw the potential. And once that video dropped, everybody else in the sea saw it too. First ever drop of Mo P and acapella and it instantly went viral. Proven that the belief everyone had in him was warranted. Nico and Mo P went on a run unlike any other. Countless drop out the countless drop. And the interesting part about it all was Mo P was one of the few that was conditioned to get his attention. It was his energy to have people tuned in. That was what really set him apart from the rest. And that no dissing lasted, but not for too long. On top of the world, it seemed that he was. Everyone supporting them, wanting them to succeed. He even locked in with the most viral YouTuber at the moment, Tommy G. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tommy G. Boots on the ground in the most dangerous city in America, St. Louis, Missouri. Real D, you in here with the main This platform elevated his stardom to even higher heights. What could go wrong? Hey, I'm trying to crash your lob. I'm trying to crash your lob, bro. Stop playing with me, bro. All that, I'm not cool with none of y'all. Yeah, you know my f***ing cup. Watch your I've seen them fall between. <laughs> Emotions. That's where. I'm a firm believer, man. IG and the internet in general is a major problem. We see it too often. A person with a fake page hops on a person's live, starts talking trash, and what do they do? They go to that person's bio to see who it is, and they diss everybody in their bio. Now, normally, before the internet, it may not have been a problem, you know? But with social media, those clips, they get passed around, especially when you buzzing like Mo P was. So, this, along with a bunch of other situations that we can't speak on that happen in the streets, led to a bunch of people having hate for Mo P, seemingly out of nowhere. Just didn't stop Mo P though. He didn't care how he was unapologetically himself, and he didn't care what impacts that that could have on him. He was still ready to diss everybody if it needed to be done. But at that point, he still had never dissed on a song, only on IG Live responding to trolls. All that hate happened to boil up. After all this situation kind of went around, some viral clips of Mo P started to circulate and not the type of viral that he would like. You talk all this high speed, you don't drive. Stop lying. All right. The video going on multiple platforms had people questioning this gangster after apparently someone that he called his brother was exposing him as not being gangster at all and faking his lifestyle. This had people wondering if what he was talking about was real or if this was simply for faking an image. However, most of his fans, they didn't even really care. They defended him every chance they got, and they were more upset with the guy who allegedly was his big brother recording it. But we're sure Mo P saw all the negative comments as well. And this enraged him more than he was before. And that led to the disc that sparked everything.
Okay, I know what you're thinking. Did you request that on a microwave? Like, what the f is this, huh? Well, actually, the low quality of the record added to the virality of the song. A lot of comments talked about how the quality was so bad, but more were intrigued with the fact that he dissed so many people they couldn't even keep count. This was the first time we heard a Mopey diss record, but wouldn't be the last. This obviously only anticipated the hate he received from particular areas of the city, but it grew his stardom to unforeseen heights. Only for shortly after, tragedy to strike. Curry B, now I know what y'all are thinking. Why I been mentioned him? Huh? Yet of course, he needs his own story for another day, man. So if y'all want the Curry B story, drop a comment, like, and subscribe, man. We'll get y'all the Curry B full Curry B story. But Curry B, for those who don't know, he's the best friend of Mo P. We didn't mention him earlier, but he was around throughout all of his run, either in the back of the video or an actual video with him. Not a Scully game member, but known from Shreve Block. Him, along with other Shreve Block members, SMTC Money, AMGQP, and others, formed an alliance that they named the Tapas. With Mo P holding the face of the crew, Kurt P was also a problem of his own. If you ask Mo P, he's one of his main inspirations musically. Something he has said many times. Some may even argue that Curry may have even been the better artist. But that's besides the point. On October 10th, 2023, Curry B tragically lost his life after being gunned down in St. Louis. This situation, as you can expect, hardened Mo P even more. At that point, he was already knee deep in the streets. But this... This just put the nail in the coffin. After dissing others weeks ago, now he has to hear people diss his best friend and laugh at his demise. At the morning of his death, he came out swinging, sending shots in every direction, and didn't have any regard for who he hit. Just no six nigga on my soul, nigga. Everything for Bob, nigga. This after this, leading to him creating an internal conflict between rival gangs and even groups clicking up, we didn't even think we see. All to either get at him. Six. Or join sides with him and his crew. Which brings us to where we are today. Mo P. Half the city on an uproar. Half the city supporting. Seems like he's at a breaking point. With over 70k followers on IG. Millions of views on all his videos. And constant viral moments. It seems only a matter of a time before. He reaches that next level to stardom. Artists in other cities at similar levels are getting their shine right now. Fine of 1700, Baby Kia, a bunch more. A lot of that, of course, is due to them being in bigger markets. Some will say if he stops dissing, he'll blow up. Our response to that is if that's what brought him more attention. And all the other artists we just mentioned, the 1700 Vines, the Baby Kias, they diss too. So is lyrics really the problem? I don't know. But with the life and the lifestyle he lives in STL, one thing we can say is we hope he sees that success will fully have the same faith of the artists and other male rappers who tried with form. 